We're going to be answering a question related to inverse functions. And in this question, we have a function that looks like a parabola. So we have the function x plus 1 all squared. Okay, and we'll probably have to sketch that. So, pro okay, so in part A, sketch the graph of fx. So like I said, it's going to be some sort of parabola, okay, because it's something squared. Now, one way I can try and approach this question, or this graph, is to just sketch my basic parabola. Okay, so I'm just going to sketch uh, fx equals to x squared, okay, and that's what it is. Then, if I want to sketch uh, our fx, which is x plus 1 all squared, it's going to be the same graph, but it's going to be translated. Okay, so again, I'm going to use this graph here, and I'm going to translate it, okay, one unit to the left. Okay, so plus 1 means horizontal translation, one unit to the left. Okay, and the yellow one is uh, the function that I want. So that's part A. Now in part B, it's asking me to state whether or not it is a one-to-one -one function. Okay, so one-to-one -one function. I'm going to try and do a bit of a test. Okay, so I'm going to see for which of my x values in my domain, let's see how many y values I get. Okay, so just starting with that x value down there. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a line down and I get a y value there. Okay, so if I just keep going across the graph, let's just see what happens. Okay, so I get a y value there. For that x value, I get another y value there. And another one there. Okay, now asking me, is that a one-to-one -one function? Okay, so a one-to-one -one function is when I have uh, one x value corresponding just to one y value. Okay, but in this situation, I have uh, one y value for two x values. Okay, so I have two x values that give me both the same y value. Okay, same here. I have an x value there and I have an x value here that both give me that same y value. Okay, so in this question, or in this function, it's not a one-to-one -one function, but it's a many-to-one -one function. Okay, and again, these names are very intuitive of its definition. So many x values to that one y value. Okay, many-to-one, and one-to-one -one is also just one x value to one y value. Okay, so again, this function is a many-to-one function. Now in C, it's asking me to determine if the inverse function exists. So will we know that if, it, if my function was a one-to-one -one function, my inverse function will exist? Okay, but however, we don't have one-to-one. -one. We have a many-to-one. Okay, so in a many-to-one situation, many-to-one uh, many functions, we don't have an inverse function. Okay, now that's because, again, for every x, for two x values, I have one y value. Okay, that becomes a bit of a problem because if I try and reflect this of y equals to x line and try and draw its inverse, what I'm going to get is my vertical line test isn't going to work. Okay, and it's not going to be a function. Okay, so that's why my inverse function does not exist because there is no function that can happen. So that's for part C. Now in part D, it's asking me to state the largest negative domain of my function here so that the inverse function does exist. Okay, so like I said before, because this is a many to one function, my inverse function doesn't exist. Now what this is saying is, well, we can try and restrict its domain and only take a part of its graph to make this uh, function have an inverse function. Okay, so currently it doesn't. Now, the reason it doesn't is because it's many to one. Okay, we have one y values for every x value. Okay, and it's not going to work when we uh, reflect it off my y equals x graph. Okay, so the largest negative domain to make this not many to one Okay, so we want to make this one to one is going to be when x is smaller or equal to negative one. Okay, so what that means is from this point here at x equals to negative one, if I just take, take off um, that part of the graph and we're only left with this part of the graph, then it suddenly becomes a just a one to one function and we can reflect it and there will be an inverse function that exists. Okay, so currently that's, it doesn't work, but if we restrict its domain and we try and state the largest negative domain, which is just for, for, for x equals to negative 1, then I will get an inverse function. Okay, And also we have two different notations. Well, we can just say x is smaller or equal to negative 1. Or we also have this notation, which is the same thing. Okay? It's saying it's in between negative infinity and a negative 1. Okay? So this is the inverse functions for this parabola.